simple. What do you think of Shinzo Abe as a leader? Also, do you think Japan should let go of its pacifist clause in along with Germany have a more military militaristic role in geopolitics? Um, for those you don't know, Shinzo Abe was the longest serving Japanese prime minister who was recently assassinated. Um, I don't know too much about him. Like I was brushing up on some stuff in light of his assassination. Um, some people paint him as a straight up out and out, like fascist cult member. Some people are like, he did a lot of good things for the economy. He symbolized a lot of hope for Japan's future and fixing a lot of like the generational economic issues. Um, and yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, we need to look into the cult stuff because that was a revelation to me. Um, I also, like a lot of people are also mentioning how big of a right winger he was. Mm -hmm. I had a different impression. Like, I mean, this is things that I'm learning about because I saw him as somebody that was becoming more open to immigration compared to other right leaning people. Um, in fact, when the assassination happened, I assumed that it might have been a right leaning person at first when we didn't know, like apparently it was a left leaning person, right? Well, I heard but, that the person who assassinated him was part of the Moonies, the Mooney, the Unification Church, which is a right wing fascist Korean church. It's a, it's one of the most destructive cults in the world. Okay. We need to look into all of this. this oh, like, I know. I can go deep on the Moonies. I know all about the Moonies. No, like we That's have cult versus story. cult because he he was also part of a cult, right? So we have cult on cult violence. <laughs> cult on cult, cult violence. <laughs> yeah, so so we should look into this. This might actually be very interesting. But I thought, like I without because I didn't have much of an information about him, I had a positive view on him, right? Because he seemed to be somebody who's aggressively pushing for making Japan a contributor into maintaining the world liberal order, right? See, yeah. Uh, yeah, so in that, like, that, I knew that about him, and I was, like, based. Um, and I also, because I'm, as somebody who's pro-immigration, I also kind of saw him as a way, like, this whole anti-immigration, um, um, this... Xenophobic, xenopho uh, and xenophobic view that really exists. It's very like in Japan, views against for um, foreigners is like extremely racist, and it's a very well for a long powerful. time. Japan was a completely, deeply isolationist civilization for centuries yeah, and yeah. centuries. So, so yeah, actually, isolation is a good term because they were both isolationists when it comes to contribution in military affairs, right? Hmm. And isolation when it comes to immigration. And I saw Shinzo Abe as somebody that was challenging both of those things. The thing that the the reason why China, Japan, is a, became a superpower is because they are they weren't an isolationist anymore when it comes to trade and economics, right? So that what's made that one thing is what made Japan um, an economic superpower. Okay, so we were like, okay, good job. You're not an isolationist on this anymore. Can you open up to as a as an economic powerhouse? Can you contribute to maintaining the world order that has created a lot of peace in the world a little bit more? Because so for a while, it was an embarrassingly low contribution. And Shinzo Abe was mo moving in that direction. And also, can you just be not so racist, to, uh, to be honest? Like, Japanese people are like the, the anti-immigrant. I mean, yeah, they need immigration. Japan needs immigration. Not badly. Really badly. badly. And the, and they're like they a lot of Japanese people are willing to like suffer through the uh, economic consequences of them just hating foreigners. <laughs> like like <laughs> like you know what? We gotta suffer through this. You know, it's better than living with these like other other people. We're like, going okay. down on this ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So I mean that's. But it, but once he died, now there's a whole bunch of things people are saying that I didn't know it was true. I, I don't even still know if it's true. But they're like he was part of a cult. He was like a right leaning. So oh, people get freaked thing, out. The main thing you could say that against him, okay, that I agree with is like he's like a, a denial, a denier of Japan's crimes in World War II. Okay, yes, there you go. That that's, that's a what, big that problem. Was, that's a big one that I already knew. 
And that's huge, okay? That's a big and, problem. That's a big, that, big problem. That is that is close as close to uh, equivalent to being the the hollow denier. I mean, I'm not gonna say the full. Yeah, thing yeah, that's good the, enough. Yeah, the, uh, you're a, like because like I, I'd imagine you being a German politician that is a hollow denier, right? A hollow yeah, that, denier. That, yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, Japan. Like I think Japan hasn't gotten like Japan's uh, war crimes during World War II is not getting enough attention because they are ex- they were disgusting and they were in the millions and everybody remembers Germany and not that many people remember like hey yeah Japan was like not cool at all during World War II and they like <laughs> they, they were like they, and they were like brutally disgusting like if you actually go read about them. But oh. you have their leaders of the country like denying it even happened. Like, and nobody is like, there was not enough pressure against them that, like, dude, what the hell? Like, nobody would accept this from Germany, but they accept this from Japan. So, you have yeah, a point. So, you have yeah. a point. And that was basically <laughs> what I wanted to bring up. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.